I'll be honest with you, we've got some folks who are really bummed that after 37 years, you are calling it quits. I'm not calling it quits. I'm just, uh, and I'm not retiring. I'm too young to retire. Exactly. Uh, I'm just uh, starting a new chapter. Oh, I like that. I made some decisions about starting that chapter and not procrastinating any longer. Wow. Okay, so that's so you're coming at this at, from a from a place of empowerment. You seem to be coming at this like like a, I am I'm choosing something different from my life. I love that. Well, I don't know if you know it's empowerment. I'm just making a decision yeah. um, to try something different. And actually, that's even wrong. It's not trying something different. I'm just starting a new chapter yeah. and making a decision. Um, I'm happy I made the decision. I do feel a sense of relief. Yeah. Yet, I have to say, I have so many incredible, incredible memories um, that will, I will always have and that wherever I go, I will always be able to share those memories. And a lot of the people that I have worked with and been blessed enough to work with um, are very much in my life. Yeah. So, and we talk every day. Yeah, I love that. Do you remember? I mean, let's go, let's go back a little ways. Do you remember that first audition or that first call for days? Do you remember what that was like? Do you have, like, you know how you know people never forget some things? First of all, what I will say is um, NBC is the first network I had ever worked for, oh, wow. ever. I had done a movie uh, with Rock Hudson and Susan Blachette and Melanie Griffith and Jack Scalia and Ed McMahon. And there's so many people. Yeah. Um, it was my, it was called the star maker. It's the first time rock ever um, died on screen. And um, it was in my arms. Um, he was such an, a magnificent, magnificent human being. He yeah. was so lovely. And there I was not knowing anything. Um, totally in the lucky club. Um, which I always said about Days of Our Lives also. I always felt I was just in this really lucky club um, to be a part of such an incredible, iconic show um, and for so many years. But yes, NBC is the first network um, that gave me an opportunity um, to work with them. And so what do, you, what do you recall about that first, maybe the, the first time you were reading as hope right like what was well did she immediately slip into character did she did she take a little bit of get, getting to know uh yeah christian getting to know everything <laughs> right it was all very new i i yeah. literally i did not drive when i first moved uh, well when i first moved to los angeles i had just gotten my license because i was living in new york at the time i'm a boston girl okay um but i was living in new york at the time and didn't need my license. But when I went in, they called for me to screen test. I went in, I screen test. I was so incredibly nervous. I believe one of my tests were with Wayne Northrup. It was in uh, the Horton house, okay. and which is the iconic house, the Horton house. Um, I just remember coming down the stairs and and the railing, the whole top of it came off. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm breaking the set. What's <laughs> happening? Um, I'm going to be a liability, if you'll think. <laughs> they hired me for whatever reason that was. Totally excited and blessed. And then about a week or so later, they had contacted my agents to, because um, they were casting the character of Bo, my co-star. And they wanted me to come in and test with the Bo's. And I was like, oh my God, no, 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 no. Just tell them I'm out of town. I can't make it because right. if they see me again, I am terrified that they'll realize they're gonna make a different choice. They've made the wrong choice, and um, they're gonna cancel that contract. So uh, <laughs> well, I did not test with the bows. Come to find out, to let you know. Um, but also, interestingly enough, I had heard I was not there since I did not test with the bows. But years later one of our stage managers, Francesca Bellini, was flying um, back to Los Angeles and was sitting next to Tom Cruise. And Tom Cruise had mentioned that he had actually tested for the role of Bo. What? I know, amazing, isn't it? I mean, I would never want to rewrite history 
with such an iconic couple. But I mean, just for a second, if you just imagine. I know. How wild that would have been. Insane, right? Insane. I love stories like that. So when, 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 um, I guess it, when news broke um, that your, your run with, with Days would be coming to an end, how did fans react? Like, what was the response that you were getting from people who had come to love and maybe even love to hate? You know what I mean? Anything is possible. Yeah. Um, well, you know, Kenny and who, Ken Corday um, is the um, executive producer of Days of Our Lives. His parents um, developed and created Days of Our Lives, Ted Corday and Betty. And Betty is actually the one who hired me. Um, thank you, Betty. And NBC, they gave me my, you know, my first shot and I'm forever grateful and always will be. And Ken has kept the show on the air for so many years and I totally take my hat off to him. Um, is, it bitter, is, it, is it bittersweet for you a little? Is it a little? Well, I don't, I, not bitter at all. Um, just sweet in mm -hmm. every way. When we had the conversation, what happened, he was explaining to me, he says, listen, he said, you know, and talking to um, Ron Carvalotti, who is the head writer and the co-executive producer, Albert Alar, they have come to the conclusion that it would be best to take you off screen, off canvas, uh, four to five months. And I was like, okay. And before he even kind of got to the next part of, which I could kind of tell in his voice where it was leading, and then you'll come back and you know, we're going to tell the Navy SEAL story. And when he told me that, I thought, oh, okay, so Ken, wait a second. If, I, if I'm if i understanding this correctly, the Navy SEAL story is the story that you want to tell 10 months ago, 12 months ago. Now it's, you know, what, 11, 12 months ago. Right. Um, but Ron didn't want to write it for whatever reason. I don't know what those reasons are. But I do recall that when Ken first told me about the story, I was like, wow, this could be a lot of fun. And I got chills. That's yeah. my barometer always, you know, and the little hairs on your arms stand up. Yeah. Um, and I thought, gosh, this could be really amazing. It's a great story. But when he told me and informed me that Ron and Albert thought it was best to take me off canvas for four to five months, I thought, you know what? I think it's time to write a new chapter. Wow. And I decided in that, that moment um, that that was a real possibility. And by the end of the conversation, of course, I could feel myself starting to get emotional. Right. Um, but it wasn't, I realized it wasn't about leaving days of our lives because I've had such an incredible run and I'm forever grateful for that and the amazing people. And I know that so many people say that, but I, and I just mean it with my whole heart. The yeah. crew, there are no words. Family, yeah. Incredible. Incredible. We, they propped us up. They made us look good. Um, they helped us every step of the way. And our cast, you know, amazing. And Janet Ryder, one of our producers on the show, um, I always called her my angel because she was. She was always there. She always had the answer. Yeah. Um, and Greg Ming, um, who is um, uh, business affairs and one of the co-executive producers. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Well, how will they handle Hope's send-off? I mean, I know that you probably taped um, a lot of the, the, the things, the storylines that will be happening now. Right. Um, were, is, there, is there a send-off in the works? Is there a, or will it kind of just end? Well, what I think probably prompted some of this um, decision with Ron and Albert is I had a lot of questions about this certain storyline and in order for something to work something else had to happen and I am someone who believes in following the history and staying true to history it's very I always felt that it was very important to the audience to the actors themselves to be honest and truthful you can build stories around things, but you have to, oh, I want to say, but I can't because I don't want to ruin this upcoming pending story. Okay. Um, but 
what I will say is that... Will people who have come to love you over these 37 years, who've grown up with you, who have watched you grow, right? These people who, who love you and this show, will they be satisfied with the way that hope and days reaches another chapter? I don't believe so. Wow. And the reason I say that is because they made this decision during COVID. Yeah. So nothing was planned for it. Right. And the reason, you know, I've agreed to do interviews and is because, because that's one of the questions, well, why are you talking about this now when you're still on the air? And because I don't want to be dishonest with yeah. the viewers. I want to be honest. I don't want to, you know, post um, or give interviews when I'm no longer a part of Days of Our Lives. Um, they'll always be a part of my heart. Um, and I may still be airing and I'm, you know, that last day of airing will, um, of course, be, you know, will be sad. Um, and I'll be sad because it should not, I would have liked for them to have at least planned and given the audience something, um, some closure and not she's off looking for someone or she's decided to take a trip or right. she's just a little, she's gone on um, a retreat. Um, or maybe <laughs> right. a, um, a academy or I don't know, I don't know. But something I will say about Hope Brady, the character I played for so many years, I, love that woman yeah. because she was powerful mm -hmm. in so many ways and still i felt soft and vulnerable and took a lot of chances yeah. and i love well, you and I love her hope hope and bo's relationship i mean y'all been through everything two people could go through <laughs> you know? And then some. And then some in a lifetime, you know? And so what is there is there a, a moment that you guys shared on set? Is there a is there a storyline or a glance? Um a, a, but a but a moment maybe fans wouldn't necessarily know that you will kind of hold near your heart as you move on to this next chapter. You and Bo, a moment that you guys shared that was like, man, we will always have that. Well, these are characters, these are not real. Um, what I will say is that Bo and Hope were their best, I think. And there were so many great moments and um, I loved working with Peter um, because he was up for anything and willing to take chances. And, you know, totally surprised me in so many ways, as I know I surprised him in many ways. Yeah. Um, but that's what works when it's not planned. Um, the words are planned, but the actions, the emotions that bubble up, um, what I will take with me is not one particular moment. Um, it's really all of the years that I have spent on the show. I want to play this game with you if, you're, okay. if, if you've got some time. It's, it's super quick, but I want you to, I want you to step into... Hope Brady, I want you to like, I want you to put her, put her, invite her into the room, okay? We're gonna play a game of Never Have I Ever. Okay. You've played this before. Never. <laughs> okay. I've so, never ever played this game. I'm gonna give you a phrase or a, a circumstance, a situation. Okay. And then you'll tell us perhaps you have, perhaps you haven't. Perhaps. Okay. Here we go. Never have I ever been kidnapped on my wedding day. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't believe so. Have I? You have. Oh, <laughs> I have? Hope agrees to marry Larry as Hope- Oh my God. Oh God. Of course, the, that iconic scene on the back of the motorcycle. Yes. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I have. <laughs> okay, okay. Here we go. Never have I ever been possessed by the devil. Never. It's true. It's true. 
Marlena. That's right. Okay. Never have I ever had someone's memories implanted into my brain. Well, yes, I have. <laughs> but, I mean, they're just the storylines. They could, it's just so rich. Okay. I have to say that storyline back in the 90s was tremendous. And I remember Ken calling to tell me about it. And because he wanted me to sing, I was like, you don't want me to sing. Save the ratings. Right, right, right. Um, but if he had told me truly the amount of work, because I was playing so many different characters, um, and, and sometimes they were opposite each other. Right. So, um, but it was so beautifully done. It just, it was so fun because I got to work with everyone. Love it. I feel like soap operas are, um, for actors, what um, going and doing stand-up is for a comedian, right? Like it is heavy work. It, it, is. Is, it is tedious, it is timing, um, it is exacting, precise. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I, I have only been on one set and I, the work that is accomplished in the short amount of time, it is an incredible, incredible thing that you guys do every day. Incredible. Okay, here we go. Never have I ever had my baby switched at birth. Yes, I have. It was a very sad time. Yes. I mean, in 2000. Yes. Took the babies. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. Of course, Stefano DeMera was involved in that. Well. But expect never. nothing less from him. Say that again. I would expect nothing less from him. Exactly. I mean, he did put that chip in my brain. Always up to no good. But that led to a really great story, I have to say. I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing well, that I welcomed it then. <laughs> but you like not everybody could pull that off. Well, you know, well, thank you, thank you. Just saying. Okay. Thanks so much. Here we go. <laughs> Never. Mm. Uh oh. <laughs> Never have I ever saved the world from freezing. 